Well, hello. Welcome back to Soul Search Sunday with Johnny Tiger. Date is November thirteenth, twenty twenty-two. I hope that you guys have been staying warm. It's、uh, definitely getting really, really cold here in British Columbia, Canada. I mean, I'm in the Vancouver area, so it's not horrible yet. But I'd imagine anywhere else. Uh, other places in BC, other part of Canada, it must be getting really, really crazy.、Um, it's been a bit of a hectic week. Not nothing bad. It's just been a little bit、uh, more involved and uh, more uh, chaotic. Uh, it was, you know, good way.、Uh, I tend to find myself. In this kind of situation, where my life can be two or three days of absolute boredom, or very quiet and peaceful, and then suddenly I find myself in the whole week of just go 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 go.、Uh, tomorrow morning, I have to get up super early again to help a friend with uh, some uh, tenancy uh, disagreement stuff. So yeah,、uh, it's been. So busy that I barely had any time to really sit down and reflect on、uh, what I should talk about for Soul Search Sunday. However, a couple of days ago, I did、uh, listen to an online lecture given by a Chinese professor, and I there was a little, not even supposed to be part of the lecture. This was more like the opening. Uh, where he's uh, uh, just came onto the stage, and there's something he talked about that, for some reason, it just kind of stuck in my head, and I thought it's、um, it's one of those little little instances in our life that、uh, kind of like a very tasty、uh, appetizer.、Uh, it's not enough to fill you up. It's not enough to really. Mean anything, make any big changes in your life, but it's quite delectable, quite、uh, tasty. So enough so that you keep thinking about it. Now this instance was kind of like that. So I want to share it with you guys.、Uh, whether you manage to get any kind of、uh, benefit, results,、uh, education, knowledge, wisdom out of this, and that's up to you.、Uh, it, it's nothing. Earth shattering. It's just something that I guess I've always thought about in my lifetime, but never really、uh, had anyone else voicing it in such a、uh, consolidated way. When the professor came onto the stage, he opened his lecture with an old Chinese story. I'm going to tell the story. Uh, more or less the way he tells it. So,、uh, and after as after I finish telling the story, I would like you guys to kind of, if you want, pause the video or just sit back and think about the story. Does it mean anything to you? That like what what the story telling you? What do you get out of the story?、Um, and then we'll continue. So the story goes a long, long time ago in the remote. A village. There was a very, very rich guy by the name of David. Now, obviously, David is not the original name of the person, but I don't want to go through the, the entire story. Saying a Chinese name in English intonation like Wang Ximing, and、uh, yeah, that's a little bit of a mouthful. So let's go, just call him David. The name is really not that important. In fact, in the original story, there's not even、uh, the name of the person. Just the one rich guy and one poor guy. Uh, but because、um, it's easier, makes the storytelling easier. We'll give him a name. So there was a very rich guy living in this remote village by the name of David. David was well, you know, just imagine what kind of rich guy. What is a millionaire? What kind of is a、uh, what constitute as a really wealthy,、uh, really loaded kind of guy?、Uh, and that was David. He had big house, big yard,、uh, big horses, big wagons. A lot of uh, uh, mistresses and wives and servants and 
and and and chef and so on and so on. He 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 was the richest guy in that entire area. Further down the street uh, was another guy by the name of George. George was the pure opposite of David. And George was poor. George was always scrounging for food and uh, sometimes having to go hungry and, and could barely feed his family, and could barely keep them warm, yada, yada, yada. So you, we have the two extremes. David, a super rich guy, and George, the super, super poor, broke guy. Now, David was the kind of guy that um, was, because he was a lot richer than anyone else around him. So he was really full of himself, uh, always looking down upon other people. And for that, not many people liked David. Then one day, George came to knock on David's door and ask the servant uh, if he could talk to David. Well, since they live on the same street, even though David didn't want anything to do with this uh, in his eye, bum, he decided to, well, let's hear what he has to say. So he invited George in and uh, the servant brought in teas and cake and dessert. And David said, okay, George, what do you want? Uh, I'm a busy man. I don't have a lot of time to sit out here and chit chat. What do you want? And George said, um, I just wanted to ask if I can borrow uh, one of your pots. Uh, you see, I, I want to do, I want to make some soup for my wife, but uh, you know my situation. I'm so poor, I, I don't even have a proper pot at home. Can I borrow one of your pots? Well, obviously, uh, a pot, a pan, a plate, whatever, it didn't mean anything to David. Uh, David didn't really want to land it to this bomb, but uh, he said, well, he decided we, we live on the same street, you know, it's kind of awkward if I say no, because we're going to run into each other all the time. But if everybody starts saying that, oh, look at that, David, he's so rich and he won't even lend a stupid pot to his neighbor. No, we can't have that. So David said to his servant, go to the kitchen. Uh, get one of the uh, uh, cheaper, well, get one of those cheap pots that we are about, we, we're just getting ready to throw away. Uh, and uh, and uh, get, uh, get, uh, lend that one to George. And George thanked him, took the crappy pot, and left. A couple of weeks later, uh, George again came back knocking on David's door, and the servant invited him in. They sat down with tea and cake and dessert. And uh, David said, hey, well, what do you want now? Uh, I'm a busy man. I don't have a lot of time to waste with people like you. Okay? Well, what do you want? Uh, and George handed David two pots. Two pots. Not, they were not identical, but they were, you know, sort of. One was the one, obviously the one David lent him, and the other one, was similar, but uh, you know, of the same uh, lousy quality. But but you know, it it wasn't uh, David's pot. So David said, "What well, what what's this? Well, what's this? Uh, I I only I lent you one pot. Why why are you giving me two? And George said, "Oh, I gotta really thank you. Your pot did amazingly in our kitchen. Uh, I was able to make soup. But but uh." Uh, did you know that your pot uh, was fertile and uh, you know it, it mated with one of the old uh, broken pots I have and, and this is the result so now I, I figure that since this is the offspring of your pot I should give it to you uh, because uh, well you know it was your pot in the first place and David was like I did you hit your head what are you talking about? Pots can't have babies. And George said, no, 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 it, it, it's true. It's true. You're, you're, well, I mean, you know, if you don't want it, and David said, no, 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 no. You're, you're right. You're right. It, it's, uh, my pot has a baby, so uh, you should, should belong to me. Uh, uh, thanks, dude. Uh, now I have one extra pot. Yeah. And about a week later, uh, George came back 
repeated the whole procedure, borrowed an, uh, the part again, and uh, this time he came back with again two parts. Oh, you did you know that your part is really fertile? You keep having babies in my kitchen. David was so happy. He he just like getting free parts and. And, and and so he didn't even argue about it. He said, oh, thanks, I did, I did, I did my, my, my pot is having a lot of babies. That's cool. A couple of weeks later, George again showed up at David's door. And he said, I, I need to borrow your pot again. I, I'm so sorry to be bothering you. And David was all smiled now. He's like, no, oh, no, dude, there's no problem. Anytime you want to borrow anything, come to me and told his servant, go, go to the kitchen, get my best pot, get my best pot and bring it to, to, to my best friend here, get, get my best pot. And the servant like, uh, sir, are you sure? Yeah, 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 yeah. go, 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 yeah, it's in my best pot, no, you know, the, the one that is pure gold, the pot is made of pure gold, go, 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 get, go get it. And in his head, he was thinking, well, you know, if this one's going to have a baby, I'm going to end up with two gold pots. A couple of weeks went by, and finally, finally, every day, David was waiting for George to come back with two pots, two pure gold pots. And finally, uh, George showed up at his door. George looked really, really sad. He handed David a handful of scrap heap, uh, uh, scrap, like just a metal scrap. And he said, dude, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Your pot, that pot you lent me, that's an old, that pot is really old and it, it died. Here, here is the remain. Here are the remains of that pot. Well, obviously David wasn't going to have it. You, you're, you're full of it. How can a pot die? How can the pot die? You 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 need to give me back my gold pot. And George said, "No, dude. You you if your pot can have babies, obviously they can die too. I I I'm not lying to you. Your pot died, and here's the the, the body, the remains. So anyway, uh, David and George went to the magistrate, tried to have the law sorted out, and after the magistrate heard the story. The magistrate decided, you know, this, this would be a nice little punishment for this rich guy because David has been such an a-hole in the local area. So the magistrate decided to rule that, yes, uh, pot, if, if, if you say the pot can have baby, then it makes sense that the pot can die. So yeah, sorry, sorry dude, your pot died, like George said, uh, you're, you're, you just lost a gold a pure gold pot. So David, in the end of the story, was out of one of his favorite, one of his best pots made of pure gold. Now that the story is finished, I want you guys to, uh, if you want, take a minute to pause the video or uh, 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 take a little bit to think about it. what does this story do for you? Does it mean anything to you? Um, what is the moral of the story in your eyes? Like, how does it make you feel? And think about it for a little while. This is not. This was not a new story for me. I have heard this story many, many times when I was little. Uh, and after telling the story. The, this Chinese professor said, I think everyone here, if you were Chinese or Taiwanese or Cantonese, you know this story, you heard it before. And if I were to ask you how you feel about the story, what, what is the moral here? What is the, uh, what is the uh, 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 morality in this story? I think most of you would be eager to tell me uh, that David got what's coming to him. He's obviously a greedy guy. He shouldn't have taken the bait in the first place. If he was honest, and if he stuck to being honest, and just said, no, dude, you, you, there's no way pot can have baby. Take, here, take your pot back. Then he wouldn't have gotten tricked. 
but because of his greed, he ended up losing one of his best parts.、Uh, and this is how millions, millions of Chinese children would have、uh, agreed with the morality of the story, including myself. When when I heard the story when I was little, that's pretty much the conclusion I came to. Like. Well, this is this is a this is a story about greed. This this is a story about you know don't don't be greedy, otherwise you are going to、uh, lose something valuable in the end, and no one's going to help you. You see, because David was such a bad person, was such an a hole and greedy.、Uh, even the magistrate didn't want to rule in his favor in the end. The A、uh, professor then went on to say, he said, a few years ago, I went to、uh, give a lecture in New York, and I decided to use this story to inspire, to to see what kind of uh, uh, what kind of、uh, reaction I would get out of American children.、Uh, so I told the story in. English, in a very great fashion, just like that Johnny Tiger guy. Okay, no, he didn't say that part, but yeah, he said I told the story in English. And then, to my chagrin and、uh, surprise and dismay, insert all the negative emotion you can have here. All the American children came back with things like. Wow, that's the kind of ch- story Chinese children listen to. So they grow up learning how to scam people. That that George is obviously a bad person. He scammed David out of his pot. It, you know that George is a lazy person. Why doesn't he go out and find job so he can buy his own pot? Why does he have to scam his rich neighbor? Why 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 is the magistrate so corrupt? Obviously, pots can't have babies, and pots can't die. So why did the magistrate rule in such a crummy fashion? This is a story about corrupt politicians and scammers that were poor because obviously they were lazy and cheaters. <laughs> totally, totally a wrong kind of reaction. Different, you know, I wouldn't say wrong, but totally different from what this professor was used to. Uh, when telling the story to Chinese audience,、uh, and I mean, in the end, there's no right or wrong way to read into this story because you know the American children well, obviously had、uh, their thoughts and they they were quite valid as well.、Uh, Chinese children,、uh, because when we were being brought up, we were constantly being reminded that rich, greedy people, bad. The poor people, no matter what they do, as long as they do it to the rich, greedy people, that they are they are in the right.、Uh, we don't really stop long enough to consider that. You no, know, some sometimes people are poor. Doesn't make them automatically better people or right. Sometimes they're poor because, like the American children were saying, maybe well, why why was he so lazy? Why didn't he go and find a job so he could buy his own pot?、Uh, so I think for me. This experience of this professor by telling this story to a Chinese audience and then to American audience, getting completely different kind of result,、uh, pretty much brings to home what I always think about. Because when people, especially nowadays, a lot of people like to talk,、uh, read inspirational quotes and inspirational story, chicken heart for the soul, chicken heart,、uh, chicken soup for the soul, chicken soup for the heart. Chicken heart, <laughs>、um, stuff like that, and I've always been a little bit of a naysayer about things that are too inspirational.、Uh, myself, I I think I mentioned this before.、Uh, I don't go for the inspirational stories. I don't go for the inspirational、uh, speeches or figures because、uh, most of the time I'm just thinking that you know. What is inspirational to one person is not always going to be inspirational to the next person, and in the end, how do you know that that person, that thing, that story, which you find so inspirational, is not just something dressed up to be that inspirational for 
commercial purposes. How do you know that the people behind these quotes and stories and videos? How do you know that this Johnny Tiger guy really is that cool? You don't. But I am. <laughs> anyway, a little bit rambly, a little bit pointless, but I hope you guys enjoy yourself. I'll be back again tomorrow for some music Monday. I hope, depending on、uh, how much I get done in the morning helping my friend. But you know, I, I I'm going to give her my best to、uh, get a song out there tomorrow. Have a good night. I'll see you guys again soon.